Darren. Thank you, uh, Chair. And uh, the Minister, I welcomed your opening remarks where you talked about tenants should be treated with respect. Um, but uh, one of the biggest criticisms we have of the social housing sector is that housing providers do not listen to tenants or involve them in decision making. And this was brought up on the Green Paper, the Government's Green Paper, where it partly um, assumed that uh, a stigma was attached and that could be part of the reason and it would do something to address it. But when the White Paper came along, it was barely mentioned. So um, my question to you, is there a stigma attached to being a social housing tenant? And perhaps does this partly in some way go to explain some of the instances we've had of uh, poor quality? And uh, what are you doing about it? If so? yeah, I, I, I am like, very sorry to say that um, certainly sometimes people aren't treated with the respect they deserve because of the tenure of the housing that they occupy. I mean, I, I had a particular instance where I was at YMCA and we had some, we had a 70 bed hostel and we had some workmen in to do some work and I was showing them around and telling them what we expected them to do. And they, the workmen I was showing around made some comments about the fact that I said the shower facilities needed to be replaced. And he said, surely it's better than being on the street though. And I said, are you suggesting that because people have slept on the street, they don't deserve to have appropriate facilities now that they're housed by the YMCA. How, how on earth does that work? And he's like, no, 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 mate, I don't mean, I didn't mean that, I didn't mean that, very quickly trying to row back from a very clear prejudice that he had already demonstrated as far as I was concerned. So I think it is, it, it goes back to that point, everybody, regardless of tenure, deserves a safe and healthy place to live, and we need to make sure we deliver that. And I, and I personally How think... How would you be doing and, Well, I, I yeah. personally think that the measures that we're introducing in the bill in terms of strengthening the regulator and so on are fundamental to that. But what I think we are doing, we are, there are two things, kind of opposite ends of the same uh, spectrum for me. We are turning up the resident's voice in terms of making sure that they all understand how to complain and how to escalate that complaint if they don't get an appropriate response. But also, during the summer of last year, I visited a number of housing providers, and I think one of the amazing things that has come from the pandemic is the fact that we are all using hybrid connectivity in a way that we never did before. Teams and Zoom existed long before coronavirus rode into town, and yet now we've all become accustomed to using it. So when I was visiting housing associations during the summer, they were showing me, uh, I, or I was attending uh, Teams or Zoom meeting with their tenants to be able to speak to them. Now, sometimes it's hard to get people to travel some distance, particularly if they have care responsibilities and so on, to travel some distance to an office and all assemble, get their tea and then spend an hour and then travel back home. Whereas instead, people can dial in via Teams in the comfort of their homes, contribute in terms of their feedback for the improving the running of that association. And then when the meeting is over, switch off the machine and go back to watching EastEnders. And so through the, and it's not, not just the work that we are going to be doing as a department in, in terms of listening to the tenant's voice, but those associations that I've visited during the summer, it seems to me that <laughs> they are taking full advantage of this hybrid connectivity and maximizing their opportunity to hear feedback from their tenants. So I think two things, we're turning up the tenant's voice in terms of making sure that their concerns and complaints are heard, but we're enhancing our opportunity to listen to them through the various means that we're developing. And, and it, is, it is just fundamental to me that once we've introduced these measures that we should be seeing a much greater parity in terms of people and the treatment they receive, receive regardless of the tenure. And one of the other things I will just say briefly is with regard to, and, and certainly my experience of providers that I've seen locally in Warsaw and the West Midlands, we need to be developing sites that are tenure blind. What you don't want to see is people developing houses on a site and have one specification that's for the social rented and another that's for the purchaser. We should be making sure that everybody gets a very good standard of property. Thank you, Minister. 
So the government has uh, recently announced the establishment of a social housing quality resident panel. And it uh, talks about that panel meeting at least three times a year and uh, will do at least six times it will have to meet. But it doesn't make it clear if, if that's uh, the limit of it or whether um, this is something that will be enduring or uh, whether it will be wound up at some point in the future. So um, is that a permanent feature? Yeah, I guess, I guess one of the things is in terms of being prescriptive from the outset about the fact that it's going to continue in perpetuity, we want to see a few things. Let's, let's demonstrate that it works effectively. Let's make sure that tenants are feeling that there's value in it for them in terms of they say we do. We need that interaction between us as a panel. And, uh, and I think if everybody sees the merit and benefit of it, then that's what will ensure its continued use rather than a government minister saying today, no, 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 we're going to carry it on for five years. Nobody's going to want to carry it on if the tenants stop turning up or stop contributing because they don't feel that it's delivering on their expectations. And that's what we intend to do. And I have to say, I mean, this is, this is one of those things where, as a minister, it feels I'm genuinely excited about being the minister responsible for this legislation because of the background that I had before I came to Parliament. I'm having the opportunity to deliver on and change some of the things that I saw were wrong previously. So I'm very excited about that panel and I'm very keen to make sure that those tenants that contribute to it feel there is real merit and real value in it for them. And, uh also, um, we went on a, a visit to the Select Committee um, last week to have a look at social housing um, that was in Croydon and uh, also in Lambeth councils. Um, and uh, it struck me that some of the uh, rooms that we went to have a look at had reasons for environmental health to come in and make an assessment and do something about it. Um, both in repair and, 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 and smells and sounds and so on, um, flood damage, etc. Um, but if they were to issue a notice, they wouldn't be able to legally issue a notice on themselves because it's run by the councils. So I don't know whether you can comment on that because that, that seems to me as something that um, it just doesn't work. It's dysfunctional. Well, I mean, one way or another, yeah. we, we will need to find a way to address that and ensure that, uh, that repairs are carried out and the level of accommodation provided is at a, an appropriate standard and we'll be, one way or another, we'll be ensuring that happens through this legislation.